here starts a month of daily driving, the Corvette in there. Let's move the truck. And just like that, truck's off to the side. That's gonna be a good spot. We'll get this all graveled in one day and make it good. Now let's get the Corvette out. All right, cold start in the garage, and then we'll pull it out. Starts pretty good for the cold. Cold, chilly morning, it is in the 30s. I am cold. So is the car, but it started out just fine. Let's get a move on. Well, so we're on the road day one. I'm not gonna do much filming today. Uh, mainly, I just wanna get there and back. This is day one after a long rebuild of this car. And so far, we're, we're doing good. We have a working speedometer and a working tachometer. That is great. Now the car is idling a little high, thanks to the tachometer, now I know that. I mean, I heard it before, but now I can see how high it actually is. But, we're looking good. Uh, I'm gonna make a pit stop for some fuel. I think I actually have fuel in this, but we're gonna do it just to be safe, because it's been so long. So yeah, we'll just keep cruising down with our working gauges. Just filled up. Let's see how it does. Absolutely nothing. So yeah, it's the fuel sender that's bad, not the gauge. But we're all the way full. Let's get moving. Well, we made it. As you see where I turned it off, it idles are about 900. Let's turn that down to about 750. Well, just lowered the idle a little bit. Start it up, hear how it sounds, and then drive back home. All right, here we go. something to note the voltmeter is now showing that it's charging it was not until I got on it so once the RPMs went above 23 ish that's when the alternator started charging apparently to the voltmeter so maybe we'll double check that to be sure that it is charging and maybe the gauge is wrong but maybe this alternator just doesn't turn on until the RPMs get up all right, we are cruising in the neighborhood. I have the parking lights on. I'm starting to see the LEDs. It's starting to get dark enough to where I can see them. Let's go ahead and turn the heater on. Now, last time I turned the heater on, I remember experiencing it almost overheating for some reason. So let's see if it does that. All right, we are home. We got the gauge lights working. The temperature stayed good, battery's charging, oil pressure's good, the heat is blowing good, and best of all, I now have heat down here at this vent since I hooked it up. We got heat in that vent, it's good. Heat is blowing nice and hot. Let's go ahead and turn things off. There we go. All right, let's check our headlights. I don't think they are working. Well, as I said it, it works, as you see. So again, turn them off, turn them on. Guess it doesn't like a off and on, but they're working. Do I have taillights? Yeah, I do. Okay, so everything seems to be working then. Got my brights on. All right, that's a successful day one. Day two, let's get a move on. So I just adjusted the mixer screws. I closed them a little bit because it was running a little, little rich. I did it about just under half a turn. We'll see how that does. That affected the idle a little bit, so I'm gonna turn it quarter turn back. That way we are more like a quarter turn from where we started. Now I'll do the other one. All right, there we go. That sounds a little bit better. Let's get a move on. So I'm learning that 
the alternator doesn't excite or kick on until I get the RPMs above 2,000, almost to 25. It's like 23, 23 RPM, that's where it starts exciting, the alternator starts charging. That also seems to be about where the fast idle kicks off of that fast idle cam and then it goes into the normal idle. So, just learning some things. If I rev it up to 25, that will get my alternator going and my idle will drop down to the normal idle. And made it. All right, we are running, time to head back home. So, I'm gonna rev it up. We should see this switch over. Yep. Switched over, kicked on to the low idle. Look at that, idling about 800. Perfect, let's get a move on. All right, we made it back home and I've noticed an issue with my headlights. So this is low beams. High beams is bright and great, but the high beams are flickering and going out. Um, whenever the car is really vibrating, it just decides to go out. So I think I have a loose ground. But my low beams, let's see, do both of them light up? No, so I only have one working low beam. That one's not working, but if I flip the high beams on, with the high beams on, all four work. So that one's not burnt out. It just isn't working on the low beam switch for some reason. So I have some wiring to figure out here and that's gonna be something I ideally wanna take care of soon, hopefully, if not, I'll put it on the list to be ASAP. Also want to point out, I got the courtesy light working when I put the car back together. So I got this side in. I did not do that side, so I want to do that. I did put this cover in, but I need to take the cover off and put in a LED here. But I need to order up that LED. So those three lights I think will really clean up and brighten up the interior at night. Into week number two. Now over the weekend, I fixed the headlights so they both work now. And I added the interior lights. Do you see, lighting up, lighting up, lighting up. Perfect. All right, cold start. There we go. All right, let's get this warmed up. We'll play musical cars and we'll be on our way. As you see, it's pretty chilly. It is high 30s right now. So we'll get a move on, we'll turn the heater on. We'll be nice and toasty in there at C3. It's tend to run hot on the inside. So like I said, I fixed the headlights. Uh, that'll be a video coming out shortly after. So stay tuned for that, but all right. Let's get going. Oh, and before, we gotta get the alternator going. So I'm gonna rev it up. There we go. And then our idle kicked down a little, so good, let's go. All right, we made it. We're idling about 950. I wanna bring it down to more like 900, so after work, we'll turn it down just a hair and see how it runs. All right, just turn the idle down a smidge. Let's see. Still starts immediately. We'll let it warm up and then we'll see what the idle comes down to. There we go. There we go. That's a pretty good idle right there. About 800-ish. Just under 750, 800. That's pretty good. Revved it up so we're charging now. All right, let's hit the road. Cruising along. We got our LEDs going. Everything's looking good. It's really neat driving with the glass T-tops at night. But, you know, it's going well. Eh, that's a good looking car. With the Cooper Cobras. The thing we're showing now is the lights here. It is bright. Like, I can actually see. This one does a lot. This LED here. I mean, I didn't have a light in there to begin with, but I can actually see and then it goes away and we're back in the darkness. That lighting from here, my lighting in the garage, it's all coming together, it's looking good. All right, 
Well, as you see, it's another morning. It is low 30s today. You see all the condensation coming out of this pipe. Now notice this one puffs a lot more as compared to this one where it's not so much. Interesting. And I wonder if it's just the middle of the garage is colder than the outside. Who knows? But we're warmed up. We should be ready to hit the road in a minute or two. This is a good looking car. All right, we made it. Still idling good, man, the sun. <laughs> yep, we're still running good. Temperature stayed good. They actually stayed cooler than they have been because uh, it is a little bit chillier today. Oil pressure still showing 40. Fuel gauge still doesn't work and don't even worry about the clock. All right, we're doing good. Um, I want to say I think so far the biggest difference improvement wise in the interior has been getting rid of all the wiring so I can put that ducting back in because now the vent over here actually works and so the heat it actually feels good like I get a good amount of heat coming out of that vent and up here so I mean that that's huge that changed up the interior quite a bit all right heading home getting off of work a little early so we're beating the traffic let's jump on the freeway it's been a while since this car has been on the freeway we are 55 miles per hour just under 2500 rpm doing good there's 60 at just over 2500 It's like 850 right now, so we are good. Great. Well, we are actually on our last week here of daily driving, and the only leak we have is one right here, which I was already aware of, and it's very, very small. So, I mean, that's pretty good. We're definitely seeping oil out of every single gasket possible, but active drifts, we only have one little spot, and it seems to be manageable, so. Let's keep warming up. It's another day in the low 30s. All the cars out there are iced over. <laughs> Let's get the car warmed up so we can get the heater on and we stay warm. Doing all this daily driving has got me thinking like, yeah, I definitely want a radio in it at one point, probably coming up soon, especially because radios are pretty cheap and speakers aren't too bad either. <laughs> this car came with the factory uh, motor antenna, the power antenna where it spins up when you turn the radio on and then comes off when you turn it off. It'd be kind of cool to set that up and get that working with the factory or with the aftermarket radio. We'll see. That's in like the back of my head of things to do, but we should be just about warmed up, just about ready to hit the road. Well, this time around we're staying a little cooler than before, but that's probably because it's chilly out, but still doing good. Almost there. And we made it. Perfect. No dieseling or anything. There we go. Well, the gasket shows empty, 
but the gas gauge doesn't work but it's been kind of going down gradually and now it's showing empty so it's got me got range anxiety now so we're at the gas pump we're gonna fill up or not fill it we're gonna put a couple bucks in it see if it goes up at all but just a couple bucks so I have peace of mind that I have enough to get back home here we've driven about 150 miles so far this 79 Corvette is supposed to have a 24 gallon tank figure about 10 miles per gallon as a conservative ex estimate about 240 miles we've driven about 150 so we should be just over sure just under half a tank left uh, that's where it should be assuming we did actually fill up last time now I just put in five gallons and we're still we're not on E but we're right about there so yeah that gauge is not doing anything it's just causing anxiety for no reason but okay we have enough to get back home and finish up the week so some math if we were full when we started this at 24 gallons we used 15 now we're at 9 out of 24 I just put in 5 gallons so we should have 14 out of 24 so 9 out of 24 would have been about 3 eighths on the fuel gauge and now 14 out of 24 is almost 0.6 like 0.58 so um, now we're above 3 eighths or 5 eighths or no we're just under 5 eighths so yeah that fuel gauge moral of the story not even close to working I don't know why it started moving all of a sudden something's going on with that I mean I'd rather it just not move at all than move but be inaccurate you know add that to the list and there we go back home lights turn on they're still working good it's great all right one more day up here this is our last day I have the next week off so this is my last day of driving daily driving this having a need to daily drive it and so some other things I've noticed is like so I've known this t-top is delaminating like I've already fixed that one but now this one's this one's been doing it but it was not as bad as before and so we have some air gap right along here and it could be the the trim that I put in. I didn't actually put seals down like you're supposed to. So that's probably what I'm experiencing. But I know the T-Tops are a factor, not a lie, in the front. So we'll have to play with that at some point. But I can't really do that until I get better T-Top mounts. Because they're bad on both sides. Like the bushing in here. So it makes more sense just to buy the whole piece for 50 bucks or whatever. But... Sounds like it's warmed up now. We're idling about 900, so to the road. So the other thing I need to fix is power steering. Now this car originally had power steering from the factory, um, but it was originally parked because it was leaking power steering fluid. So they cut the belt and called it a day. And that's how I've left it. So I really need to fix the power steering. Yesterday I was in a situation where I had to make a really tight turn and I just couldn't because I don't have power steering. So I had to do like a three point turn, but three-point turn without power steering is difficult and not to mention as I mentioned before the steering wheel is not straight it's a little crooked to the left so we need to check the alignment we might have one wheel pointing one way and one the other or maybe the racks just off-centered or the steering box not rack but and as you probably hear we have some wind noise, but I mean, the wind does, doesn't seal here. It doesn't seal there, but it does a much better job. Uh, and then the T-tops in the front, as I said, I hear wind coming from that seal. And there's our last drive here. And I'll be back in a bit. Well, here we are, heading home on the highway here. So got up early, was able to take the highway home. We're only on here for a couple miles, not far at all, but... Oh, 55. But yeah, we have a nice easy drive back home. It's pretty early in the day, so there's not much traffic at all, which is really nice. Big semi. But that's been our 
month of daily driving this car. Now, obviously, I've driven other cars throughout the month. This one, every time you see me, wasn't the only time I've driven. But any time I drove that you didn't see was because I took a different car because I had passengers in the car where I had to have a back seat or something. So every time I drove by myself, I took the car for the month of December and I stuck to that. And so that's gonna do it. We learned a lot. We have a whole list of things we want to fix and just make better on the Corvette. Make it more comfortable, just make it more practical and whatnot. But overall, it's done great. I hope it continues to do great in the new year. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.